Hello witches, wizards and those who are yet to receive their Hogwarts school letters, welcome to my Harry Potter kitchen. This is the YouTube series where I'm baking my way through the Harry Potter books, making recipes every time we find an item of food and drink inside. If you missed last week's recipe where we served up a cheesecake disguised as a wheel of mouldy cheese, then make sure you check out the link down below in the description to catch up. And if you're new to the kitchen and you want to see more, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell, and then you'll get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. Speaking of which, it's time for a new recipe, so let's get to it. We're back to the death day party again, so let's find out what recipe is up next. And again, our wonderful sentence of food continues, so let's find out the next part. There was a great maggoty haggis, a slab of cheese covered in furry green mould, and in pride of place, an enormous grey cake in the shape of a tombstone. Looks like it's time for a death day cake. If you'd like to recreate Nearly Headless Nick's tombstone cake, then all of the ingredients, measurements and instructions are up on my website, bradleybakes.co.uk. The link is down below in the description. You can't have a death day party, or any party for that matter, without a cake to celebrate. And I've been looking forward to this recipe for quite some time. It is, of course, the Nearly Headless Nick's tombstone cake from the death day party. We're gonna recreate his cake, and the best thing is, it's coming up to his death day. So on the 31st of October, I need you all to share this video with your friends and let Nearly Headless Nick know just how much we appreciate him. This tombstone cake is gonna be made from layers of chocolate sponge, a spooky charcoal grape buttercream icing, and then we'll decorate the whole thing with some fondant decorations. And I've got a few little surprises along the way to give this an extra spooky feel just in time for Halloween. First things first, we need to make that sponge. So this is what you need to do. To begin, you want to cream your butter and sugar together in your mixer until it's light and fluffy. Scrape down the sides and then keep on mixing. I'm going to crack my eggs one by one into a jug and then slowly pour that into the butter and sugar, whisking it through until it's well combined. If the mixture begins to curdle, add in a tablespoon of your flour and that will just help it come together and make sure you get a nice rise. Once all your eggs are incorporated, you can add in the rest of your flour, your vanilla, mix spice, and I'm going to make a quick paste from my cocoa powder with some boiling water, stir that through until it's smooth and then add that in too. Continue mixing, being careful not to over mix your cake batter so as soon as it looks incorporated, you can stop. And then we're gonna prepare our cake tin. For this, I've cut out a square of my baking paper, greased the tin with some butter and then lined it. Pour in your cake batter, level it off with a spatula and then this needs to go in the oven to bake at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit for about half an hour. You'll know it's ready once a skewer comes out clean. Okay, so our chocolate cake is cooked to perfection, so we're gonna leave that to one side to cool down completely. And while it's cooling, we're gonna move on to making our buttercream icing. So for this, I want it to be a kind of spooky charcoal gray, which is gonna match the outside of the tombstone. So I'm gonna add some black food coloring into my traditional buttercream icing recipe. It's super easy to make though, but if you haven't seen it before, this is what you need to do. You want to allow your butter to come to room temperature and then add that into your mixer. And we're gonna whisk that up for about two to three minutes until it's light and fluffy. I'm then gonna slowly add in my icing sugar. I like to do it in thirds, giving it a good minute or two to whisk in between each addition. Keep on going until all your icing sugar is incorporated and then you should have a light and fluffy, smooth buttercream icing. I'm going to flavour mine with some vanilla, some milk to help with the consistency, and of course our few drops of black food colouring. It's best to do these a bit at a time as we don't want to make it too dark. Once you're happy with the colour and consistency, you can stop whisking and pop it to one side. At this point your cake should be completely cooled, so I'm going to remove it from the tin and use a serrated knife to level off the top. Now, if we tried to just stand this up on its own, it would probably collapse. So what I'm gonna do is cut it into smaller rectangles and then we'll stack that with the buttercream and let it chill so it's nice and secure before we carve it down. Cut out your rectangles and then it's ready to stack. 
Begin with your first layer and then add an even amount of your buttercream icing over the top. Spread that down with an offset spatula and then sandwich your next cake layer over the top. Once you're happy with the height, you can remove any excess buttercream from the sides and then I'm gonna pop that into the fridge to firm up for at least an hour. Once the cake has had a chance to set, you want to take it out of the fridge and this is where we're gonna trim it into shape. I'm gonna place some skewers in just to give it some extra support. It's easiest to lie it down and then take yourself a tombstone stencil. Place that over the top and then cut away the excess cake. Don't throw these away though, as we're gonna use them for soil on top of our grave later on. Once you're happy with the shape, you can then place it upright again. I'm then gonna cover the entire thing with a crumb coat. That's a little bit of buttercream to trap in all of the chocolate crumbs. And then it's back into the fridge for this cake for another hour. Okay, so our cake is all stacked. So now it's time to move on to the last steps of decoration. And for this, I'm gonna use this cement gray kind of fondant to cover that whole cake and make it look like a real tombstone. Then we'll use some raw icing, which we'll also make to decorate our message onto the front. And finally, I'll show you a quick trick using marshmallows to make them look like some spooky cobwebs on top of our tombstone. Then it's just time to use some of our cake crumbs and we'll bring the whole thing together. Get yourself some grey fondant or you can dye some white fondant with some black food colouring and roll that out to about half a centimetre thick. We're going to start by covering the back so I'm going to cut out a rough piece and then place that gently over the back of the cake trimming it into place. Use some cake tools to press this down and make sure it's nice and smooth. We're then gonna work on the front. I find the easiest way is to actually lay it down on its side and then we're gonna cover the whole piece with our gray fondant, smoothing it into place and then trimming the sides. I'm gonna leave it on its side while we work on the rest of the decoration. So I'm gonna use some more of the gray fondant to make a gray trim all the way around the front. and I'm gonna cut out some fondant letters and leaf patterns to decorate with a sinister R.I.P. We're then gonna make a easy raw icing recipe. All you need is some egg whites, some icing sugar and some lemon juice and I'm gonna whisk that together until it forms a nice thick icing that we can write with. You can colour this any colour you like, but in the spooky feel, I'm going to keep it black. Place this into a piping bag with a writing tip, and then you can write your message over the top of the tombstone. Sir Nicholas's cake had tar-like icing that said, Sir Nicholas de Mimsy Porpington died 31st of October, 1492. Now I did say that we didn't want to throw away any of the cake from earlier this recipe, so all I'm gonna do is take this in my hands and turn it into some rough cake crumbs. This is gonna be the soil on top of our grave. Allow the icing to dry and then we're going to pop the cake the right way up. You can use a mix of fondant and some hot water to make a quick paste and then use that to cover the seams at the back. And finally, I promised you a trick to turn marshmallows into cobwebs, and it is really easy. All you need to do is melt down your marshmallows in the microwave or a bowl over simmering water, and then allow them to cool slightly. Test with your fingers, pinching some of the marshmallow and then stretching it apart. It should pull into strands. You can then dip your fingers in, pull out these strands and web them over the tombstone cake. Feel free to add as many or as few as you like. And we're done. Nearly headless Nick's tombstone cake for his death day party is complete. I would say trick or treat, but with this cake, it's definitely a treat. 
So that is how you can create your very own tombstone cake to celebrate Nearly Headless Nick's death day. And with the 31st of October coming up soon, let me know down below in the comments if you're going to give this one a go. If not, just share it with your friends and wish Nick a happy death day. That's all for this episode. But if you want to see more from my Harry Potter kitchen, then make sure you hit that subscribe button, click on the notification bell, then you'll get an alert every Magic Fun Day when there is a brand new recipe. I've got a lot of cake to tuck into, so I'll see you next week. Yeah, that seems big enough. Happy death day, Nick. That's a good tombstone.